Okay, space weather. Uh, there's some mind-boggling stuff going on here that I wasn't planning on covering, but since there it is, I guess I'll have to cover it. Speaking of covering it, look at the object covering the sun on this 48-hour SDO video. Hmm, looks kind of odd, doesn't it? Let's let this play. What is it, the moon passing in front of the satellite, right? Probably just the moon passing in front of the satellite. Let's let the video play and see what happens. Uh, what? Let's look at that again. What is, what, huh? Okay. Boy, that looks a little anomalous, doesn't it? Let's look at a different view, different wavelength. How about the 171 angstroms? Do we see something like that there? Here's your timestamp. If anybody has a theory what this is, huh, we'd be very interested. Boy, that's some anomalous data there. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, let's look at normal space weather now. <laughs> Take a look at spaceweather.com. We see the solar wind is 346 kilometers per second. And the density is 5.3 protons per cubic centimeter. Taking a look at the real-time solar wind here with one minute updating i might add very nice all right so wow the phi angle has really leveled out around 140 really leveled out the btbz is really leveled out density has gone up a bit and we do have a forecast of geomagnetic storms up to a six on September 11th, probability of H-class flare, 80%. Also, we do have a sunspot, 2721 has formed out of the active region in between the coronal holes. While the magnetic fields are not looking too great, pretty weak, it still is a sunspot, and being in between coronal holes again, uh, puts it in an interesting spot because it, we're going to get a proton surge. Look at the rest of the space weather data. And by the way, uh, you can see this object move in front of the satellite and then blast away in front of the satellite again in the opposite direction at about 160 degrees. Anyway, here you go. Yup. You saw it. <sighs> All right. So uh, the X-ray flux is back up to a more flatlined level. Very flatlined, actually. Magnetometer is looking pretty smooth, actually, as the corona hole remains connected. Uh, again, we're expecting a dip in the electron flux when the coronal hole wind stream arrives, so possibly in a few hours we may see a dip. But within 24 hours, I really expect to see a dip in this. And there's your F2 ionosphere layer. Right. <sighs> so it took a little longer to com compile this video than it normally does because I had to look at this insanity on various different places. And there it is. Again, if anybody's got any ideas as to what's going on with that, please feel free to, to comment. And uh, everybody else, if you haven't subscribed, share the videos. By the way, thank you all subscribers. The channel is always growing, and we appreciate all of your interactions. Have a delightful day.